Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. So in today's video, I'm going to be showing you how to install and configure Rapid7 inside VM technology add-on for Splunk. So just giving you a little info about Rapid7 for those of you not familiar. Rapid7 is basically a vulnerability management tool. So what this does is that it helps you to identify vulnerabilities on your corporate networks. So for example, on um, end user devices, on security appliances, um, etc. any kind of endpoint you, know, you have in your corporate environment. This basically scans the network or scans the devices and it identifies vulnerabilities. Right? Another cool thing about Rapid7 is besides identifying the vulnerabilities, it, in most cases, it also provides you with the solution. You know, so whether it's a patch or, or something like that, you know, that it's needed to, ident to remedy the vulnerability, Rapid7 also gives you that information. So it doesn't leave you stranded. You know, it, it identifies the vulnerability as well as it provides you a way to rectify that vulnerability. Um, Splunk on the other hand is what is considered a SIEM, right? So the SIEM stands for Security Information and Event Management. So basically what Splunk does is that it provides a centralized place for you to collect and aggregate large amounts of data, right? So a lot of our devices, they have their own logs, they have their own dashboards, etc. But as a security professional, who wants to do that, right? Who wants to log into a hundred different devices, you know, to check their logs? That's where Splunk comes in. Splunk basically provides a centralized repository that makes your work as a, a security professional much easier. Also, aside from collecting logs from devices, Splunk also has the ability to collect data from other platforms as well. And that's what we're going to do in this demo. We're going to forward the data collected by Rapid7 to Splunk, you know, for easy retrieval as well as querying. All right, so without any further ado, let's get into the demo. So first of all, I actually logged into my Splunk dashboard. Right? I'm using Splunk Cloud, however, if you're using the on-prem version, it should more or less be the same procedure. Also, for privacy reasons, a lot of the information would be blurred, but that should not stop you from being able to follow along with the demo. So first off, I need to hop over to my Rapid7 inside VM dashboard. Right? The first thing we're going to do is generate an API key. So to do this, we want to click on the little gear wheel icon on the top right hand corner of the screen. We want to hit on this. Uh, we want to click on API keys. So on this screen, you should see user key and organization key. You want to be sure to select organization key because if you select user key, it won't work. All right next, you want to select new organization key. And you want to give the key a name, right? You can name it whatever you like. For this demo, I'm just going to name it Rapid7. You know, keep it nice and simple. Especially if you have multiple API keys, you know, naming it something that you'll be able to identify would be pretty handy. I'm going to hit generate. And voila, you have your API key. So you want to copy this API key because you will never see this key again, right? So, so be sure and copy this key and have it stored in a safe place. And just confirming, we could see that that new Rapid7 key was successfully generated. Next, I'm going to hop back over to my Splunk dashboard. And here I need to install two apps, right? So to do that, I just go at the bottom of the screen there that it says find more apps and I want to click on that. So on this page, we'll be able to search for the Rapid7 apps, right? So to do that, I'm just going to type in Rapid7, hit enter. And we can see we have the two Rapid7 results, right? The third one at the bottom, next pose, this is a deprecated app that was used previously. But for this demo, we'll be using the Rapid7 Inside VM dashboard for Splunk app, as well as the technology add-on for Splunk app. So first off, I want to hit install to install the technology add-on, right? And now be prompted for my Splunk credentials. This is my Splunk.com credentials. So I'm going to enter that here. Guys, and remember, if you want to follow along with this um, demo, 
right? Splunk gives you, I think, something like a 30-day trial, you know, so you could feel free to create an account with them, right, and follow along if you want to. Also, if you'd like me to, um, you know, do a demo, do a video showing you how to install Splunk, right, be sure to comment down below and I'll go ahead and create that video for you. So after I hit agree and install, I'll just give it a minute or two to do its thing. And nice, the add-on was successfully installed. So I'm just going to hit done. Next up, I'm going to install the Rapid7 Inside VM dashboard for Splunk app. Right, so same procedure. I'm going to hit install, enter my credentials if prompted, and let it do its thing. Awesome, so my two apps should be installed. I'm going to head over back to my dashboard's home screen and I should see them there. And we can see on the side pane here that the two apps have successfully been installed. We actually need to do a restart in order for them to work properly, right? But before we do that, I want to create an index for Rapid7, right? So to do that, I want to hit settings and I want to hit on indexes right and here we'd be able to create an index right so an index is basically a way for the rapid 7 um, add-ons and apps to be able to store data right in its simplest form that's what an index is right so this is a list of the current indexes i have here right yours might be a bit different and what we want to do is we want to create a new index so I'm going to go to the top right hand corner of the screen and I'm going to hit on new index and I'm going to name it rapid seven, right? Um, you can name it whatever you like. However, by default, rapid seven is used in the app itself. So I'm just going to keep it as that. I'm going to leave the index data type as events and I could set the raw data size here. I'm just going to choose zero. This means unlimited. Right, but be sure to set it whatever you want based on your license, you know, your Splunk license, right? I'm just going to select zero for unlimited, right? And we have the searchable retention days now, meaning how long do I want to be able to search this data, right? And I'm just going to choose 90 days, right? That should be more than sufficient for me. And we have the Splunk archive now. So beside the searchable reten um, retention, sorry, we could have an archive of the data. And for the archive, I'm going to choose one year, right? But be sure to customize this for your liking, right? Next, I'm going to hit save. And usually this takes like maybe a minute to set up this index properly. So just be patient and give it a little time to do its thing. And if we look at our index list, we could see that that Rapid7 index was successfully created. I'm now going to head back over to my Splunk dashboard. So I want to do a reset on the Splunk server just for the index and the app installations to work properly. And you know, I, I like to do a restart. So I go to settings, server controls, and here I should get the option to do a restart. Yeah, and I want to hit restart Splunk. So this normally takes a minute or two just for the server to shut down and restart properly. My server is now back up, so I'm going to enter my credentials and sign in. Now if we look at those two Rapid7 apps, you notice the logo has changed a bit, right? So this gives me the impression that the, the installation was successful and when we did the restart, it completed whatever process needed to be completed for us to use the apps, right? So the inside VM up at the top, this is where we actually do the configurations and the dashboard one at the bottom, this is what we use to visualize the data, right? So to get started, I'm going to hit on the inside VM app and here's where we'll be actually doing the configuration, right? So what we need to do is that we need to head over to the configurations tab. So if we look at the top, we'd see inputs and configuration and search. We need to head over to the configurations tab. Once we're in the configurations tab, we need to add a connection, right? So we want to hit on the add button. And now we need to enter these three pieces of information, right? Starting off with the connection name, 
right? You can name it whatever you like, you know. However, you can't put any spaces. So um, for my demo, I'm going to name it rapid7 underscore connection. Anything you want, you know, feel free to name it that, right? For the region type, this is the region where your rapid7 data is stored. And you should be able to get this information in your inside VM settings, right? So um, feel free to refer to that. And once you find out what is your region, um, enter it here, right? So it, 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 this would be like the location where your data is stored, your Rapid7 data is stored. It might be US, it might be whatever, you know, is the abbreviation. That's what you want to put here, right? Last but not least, we need to enter the API key. And as you remember, at the beginning of this video, we generated a Rapid7 um, API key, right? So you need to paste that API key here. Once everything looks good, go ahead and hit add. And this should create your new Rapid7 connection. Now that your connection has been created, we want to head over to the Inputs tab. Right? And here we need to create two inputs. Right? So to get started, we want to head over to the right hand corner of the screen and create new input. Right? So I'm going to start with the asset import input. I'm going to start with that first. So I'm going to hit on that and we need to give it a name. This could be whatever you want. I like to just copy the name here itself and paste it there, you know, but this is really up to you. Doesn't really matter, right? And you can't have any spaces here, you know, just a heads up. For the interval time, I'm going to leave it as the default interval. And for the index, I'm going to leave this at rapid seven. Remember this index is the one that we created a little while ago, right? So I, I named that rapid seven. So I'm going to leave it here as rapid seven. However, if you named yours to something different, be sure to select the right index. Also for connection, I'm going to select the new rapid seven connection that I just created over there in the configurations tab, right? I'm going to select that as the connection. There's a bunch of um, optional settings, so if I'm going to leave that as it is, right? If you want to specify any certain filters, sites, etc., I'm going to leave it as it is. And I'm going to select import vulnerabilities, right? This would allow us to import the asset vulnerabilities findings, right? Uh, I'm going to leave include same vulnerabilities unchecked. And for vulnerability filter, you could se select it, you know, and you could use this format that it's showing here. You know, if you want to only import more severe vulnerabilities, you could do that as well. However, I'm going to just leave these things as they are, leave it as default, but be, you know, be feel free to tweak these things as necessary, right? For fill import schedule, again, I'm going to leave this as it is, right? So once you're good with this, go ahead and hit on add. And we could see that input was successfully added and it's currently enabled. We're going to go ahead and create a next input. I'm going to do the second one now, right? The vulnerability definition. And for this, again, I'm just going to copy the name here, right? I think the, the full name might be a bit too long, right? So I'm just going to leave out a part of the name, right? So I'm just going to copy this. I'm going to paste it here and I'm going to remove any spaces because it's going to throw a tam trum if I don't. And similarly, I'm going to leave the interval as the default and I'm going to enter the index name as well as the connection name. I'm going to leave the vulnerability filter. I'm not going to do anything with that and I'm just going to select add. And we can see that our two inputs have been successfully set up. And remember guys, this is critical. You know, if you make any errors here, it won't work so be sure to do this properly so i'm now back over on my splunk dashboard and i'm gonna hit on the inside vm dashboard and if all is configured properly you should see a lot of data being populated in this dashboard right there should be a lot of data pie chart etc right so if for any reason you're not seeing data being populated recheck your configuration and just make sure everything is configured properly 
If you look at the top, you'll notice there are two different tabs. One is the asset dashboard, as well as the vulnerability finding dashboard, right? So basically the asset dashboard is responsible for giving you um, information with regards to the different assets that your Rapid7 um, has scanned, right? And the vulnerability finding dashboard gives you information specifically about the different vulnerabilities identified in your environment. So more or less, it's kind of the same information, almost just kind of focusing on two different aspects. One highlights it from an asset point of view, the other one from a vulnerability point of view, right? But feel free to switch between both of them, you know, to help you investigate the type of data you need. And that brings us to the end of this video, guys. Remember, if you found any value in this video, be sure to give it a big thumbs up. And I'm considering making more videos concerning Splunk and Rapid7, how to kind of set them up from scratch and stuff like that. If it's something you're interested in, be sure to comment down below and let me know. And in general, if you like this type of content, be sure to subscribe to the channel as well as hit on the notification bell to be notified once a new video is released. As always, thanks again for viewing. See you soon.